So we saw working with relatively complex tag code. Now let's take a look at making our custom tags a little more flexible for the JSP developer. One of the problems with regular custom tags is that the HTML markup is actually in the Java code and the uh, JSP developer cannot extend that or customize it. In other words, um, the user of the tag, the JSP developer, can't do much more with it, can't uh, make decisions about markup. Fragment attributes and learning the use of fragment attributes and how to provide that in a tag give the user of the tag, and again we're talking about the JSP developer as the user of the tag, allows the user of the tag to supply their own markup and customize rendering based on decisions that make sense in the user interface or in the view layer. The steps to implement fragment attributes are relatively simple. First, you flag the attribute as a fragment in the TLD file, and we'll, we'll look at the nits and bits of how to make this work. In the tag class, in other words, in your custom tag Java code, you create a variable of type JSP fragment for the particular attribute as a class variable and add the appropriate setter method and make sure it's implemented correctly. From the do tag method, when you wish to render the fragment, you call the invoke method of the fragment, passing a null value. This step is the same as what you do when we're rendering the body of a tag. So here we see an example of what the Java class would look like to work with fragment attributes. Notice the first thing we do is set a class variable of type JSP fragment, and we implement the setter method on that variable. So in this example we have a, an instance variable called snippet and our setter is called set snippet. In the do tag method we're doing nothing else except printing out our markup as we normally would do and setting the attribute calling set attribute, set a message on, in this case we're setting in the page context by using JSP uh, context, and then call on the snippet itself, call the invoke method on the JSP fragment. In the JSP file, the JSP developer now has some flexibility to supply the JSP fragment into the markup using the JSP attribute tag. So here we see JSP attribute and the name is snippet. Inside the body of this JSP attribute tag, this will be evaluated as a JSP fragment or a JSP snippet, specifically a JSP fragment, within the body of our example tag. So this gives the JSP developer a little more flexibility with a couple simple steps. We've seen many elements of the tag library descriptor file. Let's go through them and make sure we understand the details of this file. The root element of a TLD file is taglib. So very simply, uh, taglib element, this is the root element in XML format. Um, you see various attributes set for the taglib element, um, mostly around the JSP schema um, and specifications for tag library descriptors. Mandatory child elements of taglib are, of course, tlib version, a version identifier. A URI, this is an identifier that is unique for this particular tag library, giving us also the ability to serve as a namespace for the tags that are defined in the TLD file. Optional child elements are short name, display name, description, and then of course uh, tag. Tag is the element that's used to define each tag. There are some rules that we have to keep in mind in defining a tag. A tag developed using either the simplified or the classic API has to be registered in a TLD file using the tag element. The child elements of a tag element are name, the name of the tag as it appears in the JSP file, keeping in mind that this is also the name that the JSP developer is going to use, as long as it's defined within the same namespace of the TLD file itself. The tag class, which is the fully qualified Java name of the Java class that implements the necessary tag work. Display name, description, body content. Your choices for body content are empty if you're not handling 
body content. JSP, if the content of the tag will be in fact interpreted as JSP. And then new options are tag dependent or scriptless, depending on whether you're talking about J2EE 1.4 specification um, or the new Java EE 5. 1.4 uses scriptless and uh, Java EE 5, giving us a little more flexibility, um, uses tag dependent. There's also the attribute element. The attribute element is a child of tag. Um, it allows you to uh, define each attribute that the tag supports. The attribute element supports certain child element features, particularly the name of the attribute, defined using the name element, whether or not the attribute uh, value is required. Um, so your options for required are true or false, is the attribute value required. Runtime expression, your options are true or false. If true, a JSP expression language or JSP expression can be supplied as a value. Otherwise, only static string values are allowed. Type, if you're using an expression language expression to supply a Java object, as the value of an attribute, it must be of this type. By default, the type is set to string. Fragment, if the attribute is a fragment, um, if you set the fragment element to true, there's no need to specify runtime expression value or specify type because fragment will be, in fact, a JSP fragment. What are some recommendations for the Java developer to consider in packaging their custom tags and their tag library descriptors? When it comes to packaging tags developed using either the simplified or the classic API, you have two choices. There's the standalone approach where you develop a separate project separate from the web application. Then as a Java developer, you build a jar file for all of your custom tag classes and add that jar file to the web application lib directory under webinf. In application, in application is when um, you simply place the tag classes in the same project as the web application. They are compiled along with all other Java source code and stored in the classes directory, compiled and uh, run from the classes directory within webinf. The standalone option is recommended for maximum reuse because when it's uh, stored in a lib directory, um, you have the ability to share it among multiple applications. In the standalone option, all TLD files must appear within the metainf folder. The file name can be anything as long as it has a TLD extension. This is how the system discovers it. In the in-application object, the TLD files must appear anywhere below WebINF. It's recommended that you create a subdirectory, obviously, to organize and make it easier to understand, but the file names must have a TLD extension. Before J2EE 1.4, if you're out on the Google machine and you're researching the specifications, trying to firm it up on you, you may get search results that indicate that the TLD file has to be registered in web.xml. Before J2EE 1.4, before that specification, this was in fact true, but it's no longer necessary. The web container now automatically loads all TLD files that are within the webinf folder or from jar files that are inside of webinf uh, slash lib, the lib folder. The JSP developer to use a tag library inside of their JSP file they declare a namespace prefix for the tag library using the tag lib directive. So again, simple syntax, we see uh, the tag lib directive, the URI, and prefixed for uh, whatever makes sense within the namespace. And so using that prefix, we're actually um, accessing elements and tags that are available in that common namespace. The URI defined here by the JSP developer must match the URI that's declared in the TLD file. Then the JSP developer can begin using the, any tag that's declared in the TLD file. 
for example, with the prefix MT, as we see in our previous example, using a tag with the name example, um, we're using a reference to the tag itself, dot, dot, dot. So we're not accounting for any attributes or anything. We're just putting it up on a slide. Vendors may require additional steps for the JSP editor to know about custom tags. So depending on the IDE you eventually end up using, you may have additional steps necessary to incorporate custom tags into your development environment. However, from the runtime point of view, what we've seen as our primer for uh, deploying our tag libraries is sufficient for all Java EE compliant server vendors. Now let's go take a look in Eclipse at how to enhance our Java custom code to support JSP fragments for our JSP developers. One of the challenges in working with JSP custom tags is really a management issue in terms of determining whether or not your developers are going to focus their efforts in their fields of expertise or they're going to wear multiple hats and um, have to master essentially two or three different programming languages. I know we all have to wear different hats from time to time. But there's always a challenge in striking the balance so that we can maximize the skill set we have, maximize the skills of our Java developers, maximize the skills of our JSP developers. And JSP developers are primarily focused on the user interface, how our user interface, our customer-facing website uh, looks, how it feels, colors, flow of the content itself. And Java developers tend to be more focused on powerful programming logic to provide the business logic for our application. Continuing to strive to strike that balance between making our tags uh, powerful and functional and as flexible as possible for the JSP developer, we're going to continue with those efforts and use JSP fragments, allow the JSP developer to use JSP fragments to have a little more flexibility in how they render their JSP also using the JSP syntax that they've grown accustomed to, keeping, keeping them focused on the language that they're used to using, that they're skilled in, and keeping the Java programmer focused on the Java code that they're used to working in. Let's take a look in improving our custom tag. I'm going to go ahead and open our employee list uh, tag, Java. I'm going to make some improvements to allow the JSP developers to make use of fragment features, providing fragments as attribute values in their JSP. The first thing I'm going to add to my Java code is the necessary JSP fragment object. And we'll call it uh, name snippet. little uh, organizing our imports to resolve um, issues. And it looks like I typed a colon instead of a semicolon. I certainly did. Thank you, Tool. Thank you, Eclipse, for pointing out my typos. Um, I wish I had you when I was taking the certification exam, because you don't get a compiler to tell you where your typos are. And that's what the test is. It asks you where, you know, where the code is wrong. Now I'm going to... Um, put in the necessary setter for this JSP fragment, right? Through the magic of copy and paste, um, our setter is required. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to copy and paste this in for my setter. This is pretty standard Java getter setter. Nothing you know, exciting to see here. I'm going to modify my uh, do tag method to give my JSP developer, remember the do tag method is the heavy lifting of a custom tag. This is where the, the logic goes for the real business logic and the customization of a tag. I'm going to streamline it for myself a little bit um, as a Java developer and give a little more flexibility to the JSP developer. Particularly, I'm interested in replacing this one line where I'm actually retrieving the first name the middle name, the last name from my employee list 
and I'll let the JSP developer, I'll just store that information so that the JSP can retrieve the information and render it with formatting or whatever it is that uh, the JSP developer needs to do and wants to do in uh, having the most flexibility on the UI side in the presentation layer. I'm going to change this line to one line where I'm just going to store the attribute in the JSP context, right? And it is necessary when working with fragments to also call the invoke method on that fragment element and pass a null attribute. So I'll go ahead and uh, copy that one in as well. And I'm just replacing this one line. I'll continue to print out the employee number. I just want the JSP developer to have the flexibility to decide how they're going to render just the names. Okay, so um, I'm changing the tag code itself. That's all I need to do, except I'm going to handle an attribute in my custom code. I want to be able to add an attribute to the tag. Okay, so that requires, of course, modifying my tag library descriptor. You remember that the uh, custom TLD is where is the tag library descriptor. We're defining the tags that are implemented by employee list tag. I'm going to add a, an attribute to employee list, the employee list tag, um, that corresponds with the JSP fragment in my code. And notice I'm going to set fragment to be true. Okay, so I copy. I'm just, all I'm doing in the XML is really adding an attribute to the tag itself doesn't necessarily matter where it is in the XML element hierarchy um, as long as it's a child element of the tag itself, which it is. Okay, so uh, that's taken care of as far as the Java developer goes. I've added and encapsulated some new functionality with my custom tag. So the JSP developer is now free to uh, work with the additional functionality that I've provided in my custom tag. If I look at the JSP as it currently stands, I don't have too much flexibility in uh, my tag employee list. The last time we worked with this, we only uh, specified, we passed in an attribute. Okay. I'm going to, as now I've put on my JSP developer hat, I'm going to, I don't like the way the list is going, it's just plain black list. I want some flexibility and some flow and some uh, artistry to my list. So thanks to my Java developer, I've got some additional uh, features available. Um, so from my tag, right, which is in the same URI namespace as the custom TLD, I can um, start typing my tag and the tools should come up with uh, no default proposals. Thanks a lot. And, you know. What's the name of our tag? Hasn't reloaded yet. Sometimes you have to open and close these browsers a number of times. I should be able to copy it from the TLD um, or did I type a semicolon this time instead of a colon? That's also possible. No, the tool's just not picking it up. Um, well, I'll copy and paste it in. Uh, the use, uh, you know, we know how the tool works with custom tags. I can see that it's reading the custom tag library um, by uh, the previous use of my tag. I see that the prefix is there. Um, simple tags. I might want to double check that the URI is correct in my custom TLD. The URI is Yep, it's going to take a while for the system to catch up, but the URI is HTTP WWA simple tag, so it's going to take a while for the system to catch up, I think. Um, sometimes it happens in evaluating these tags. Um, let me try just really quick, close this, open it again. It still doesn't like it. It will. Don't worry about it. Um, it says unknown tag custom sample on the first one, custom sample. I still have the tag custom sample. What's happening is the application hasn't been republished, so the web INF artifacts haven't been sent back out. I'm going to trust that this works um, because I've used this tag library before. 
I, I'm thinking it just needs to be recompiled, but that's okay. We'll work with it. Let's copy and paste in um, the use of the tag, okay? Um, the tag library descriptor doesn't need to change. I'm copying and pasting, you know, because my Java developer sent it in an email. So I need to watch out the prefix he sent me in the email, um, or she, could have been a she, um, sent me, they use the E prefix, and of course I prefixed it with my tag. So I'm going to make sure and fix that. That's got to be fixed for sure. Um, on the opening closing tag. And this is just an emphasis that the reference um, from prefix is a local reference. It's how you're going to locally use the tags in the tag library as referenced in the URI. So let's co try compiling it. Let's try running it. The server is stopped and it says it needs to publish. Just as a sanity check, I like to call, close JSP editors. I like to close anything that I think, other than the Java code, which the most of the IDEs don't seem to have a problem, leaving those editors open. But things that need to be interpreted and compiled, such as JSP files, such as TLD files, these are the kinds of things I tend to have disciplined myself because I have trauma in the past where I tried to run it and it wouldn't compile correctly because the editor was still open. It wouldn't prompt me. There was no need to save. You know, those little hitches in the giddy up as it were. So let's try publishing. Let's see if we have any publish errors. I like having my publish separate from running it on the server. And again, we're testing custom tag code. So we're not going to run the tag code. We're not going to run the TLD. We're not going to run the JSP itself. We're going to run a servlet, in this case, list employee servlets. And we're going to run uh, this servlet because it forwards to our list employees JSP. So in testing, this is a handy way to make sure that uh, we're making progress moving toward enhancing from the controller layer to the presentation layer. It's time for the JSP uh, developers to step in. This is the JSP we're concentrating our efforts on right now. So what I run in my test is, of course, the servlet or controller that calls to the presentation layer. Make sure everything's working as designed. So I see I have no build errors. Right click on list employees, run as, run on server. So I'm waiting for the server to start up. I want to make sure that um, everything is working as I expected. And I see that my JSP developer has been able to add some style to our presentation layer. By reversing the names, we're now displaying the last name and then the first name, and also putting them in red. So the JSP developer has been able to uh, use the extended features um, supplying, let's open up and uh, review, supplying uh, as a JSP attribute in the body of the tag. And I'm still getting notes, unknown tag, unknown tag. And sometimes that happens that the uh, tag library, if we're using the URI especially, we get these cautionary messages, warning messages, not compile messages, but warning messages. Because until the JSP is actually run, the name resolution in the namespace doesn't necessarily happen because we've used the quick, easy feature of just locating our TLD file in the deployed artifacts for our application. In other words, under the WebINF folder. So in the tooling, um, sometimes these names can't quite be resolved for a while until the tool picks up the environment. So the JSP developer had the flexibility to take the list that my controller is generating and render it and add some style. In this case, you know, change the font, change the color to red. The JSP developer is uh, concentrating on what they do best, which is rendering the presentation layer. And the Java developer is focusing their efforts on just making sure that we have the minimally required business logic supplied from the controller layer so that the presentation layer can make use of it. So that should give us an idea of what we can do with custom tags, keeping in mind that what we're focusing on are really two different things. We're looking at the Java logic that goes behind this, as well as the JSP logic that goes behind this.